fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Now you can ride, ride, ride with The Lone Ranger. Yes, you can act like the Lone Ranger, think like the Lone Ranger in genuine Western adventures, exciting Lone Ranger mysteries, now on the backs of these popular General Mills cereals, Cheerios, Wheaties, Kicks, Sugar Jets, and Tricks. There are 11 of these thrilling mysteries, one to a package, and you'll want to solve them all. Here's a sample. One mystery is called The Guilty Stranger. A stagecoach is robbed, and there are two suspects. Which one is guilty? The Lone Ranger finds out. Can you... To help you, there's an invisible writing clue inside the package. Dip this amazing clue in water, and writing appears like magic. What's more, the back of the clue tells you how you can become an official Lone Ranger deputy with mask, badge, identification card, and hollow silver-colored bullet. Look for the Lone Ranger Mystery Adventures now on specially marked packages of Cheerios, Wheaties, Kicks, Sugar Jets, and Tricks. Get them all and ride with the Lone Ranger! With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! By various means, many of them shady, Lem Sherman expanded his real estate holdings until he owned more land than any rancher in the territory. But he wasn't satisfied. He had great ambitions, and he bragged of them. I'm going to own all the land between the border and the Keystone Mountains. I'll control the cattle market. I'll make the prices. I'll have an army of men working for me. The word of Sherman's plans spread far and wide. Clarabelle Hornblow had a visitor in the person of the man who wanted to be a king, Lem Sherman. Sherman, don't you ever give up. You've been trying for the past five years to get this ranch. And I keep telling you it's not for sale. And if it was, I wouldn't sell it to you. Clarabelle, I'm offering a good price. If you don't sell, you're a fool. Sherman! A stubborn fool. That'll do. Now clear out. Get! Wait. I may own this place for the face of the mortgage. What's that? (laughs) I brought you up short, huh? What do you know about a mortgage? I know all about it, Clarabelle. You borrowed the cash nearly a year ago when you failed to sell your cattle. And you know why I didn't sell it, you hawk-faced skinflint. You cut prices. You took a loss on your own cattle just to do me out of the sale. But... (laughs) How'd you know about the mortgage? Banker Timmons told me about it. With that flat-jawed blabbermouth, he said he'd keep it secret. He sold it to me. His tongue wags too free. He what? He sold me the mortgage. You... I'll have the cash to pay when the mortgage comes due. It'll be due in a few weeks. If you don't pay, I'll foreclose. I'll take the rain. I said I'd pay. Not unless you sell your cattle. I'll sell it. The deal's already made, so there. Now, Dad, write it clear out. Clear out, or I'll back up what I say with this here shotgun. You put that down. Then shove on. Bam loose. Mount that horse and ride fast. I've got a nervous finger on this trigger. I'm going. But remember what I said. 
The next offer won't be so high. You crazy old fool. You nearly blew my head off. The Lone Ranger and Thunder Martin were on their way around the side to the front door when they heard the shotgun roar and saw Lem Sherman right away with his coattails flying in the wind. (laughs) (laughs) Did you hear Clarabelle telling off that critter? Yes, Thunder, I heard her. Same old Clarabelle. Doggone, there's a woman to be proud of. She slammed the door. Say, the mood she's in, I hadn't better bust in without rapping, huh? Very well. I, uh, I sure hope she's reasonable about my string of mules. I, I, I'd better break the news to her, sort of gentle-like, huh? Uh, yes, that might be a good idea. Oh! Uh, Hello, Clarabelle. Well, my mask friend, how are you? Say, it's good to see you. Come on in, make yourself right to home. I'll have grub ready in no time. Oh, thanks. Well, I thought you'd be glad to see our friend. I sore am. I'll never get over being grateful for the way you helped me out of trouble three, four times. Uh, Clarabelle, I... Thunder, this is the first time you've ever been away for a spell and brought back something worthwhile. Uh... Most times you bring back a stove-in, lop-eared, hammer-headed mule. How come you didn't bring back a mule this time? Well, uh, Clarabelle, uh, I did. You brought back a mule? Uh, not one. I got 20 of them. Why? I'm a jackass. Now, Clarabelle, uh, uh, they're the prettiest, nicest little mules you ever laid eyes on. Shut up! Go to the woodshed and scrub up. I'll get supper. Uh, I'll go with you, Thunder. Oh, you'll do nothing of the kind. Woodshed's all right for Thunder, but not for you. I'll show you where to wash up. Got a nice new wash basin over here, and I'll be proud to have you use it. Uh, say, where's Connell? Oh, uh, he's gone to town for a few supplies. Uh, he'll be here later. <laughs> In town, when Toto found the general store closed for the day, he went to the restaurant in the hope of buying salt, flour, and baking powder. He was asked by the cafe owner to wait until the diners had been served. He sat down not far from a table where a man in trainman's overalls was eating. Presently, Toto heard the trainman addressed by name. Hello, Bert. No, Mr. Sherman. Mind if I sit down for a few minutes? No, no. Go right ahead, Mr. Sherman. Where's your engine? Down the main line? No, sir. I left her over on your side, and after shoving a string of empty cattle cars in for your stock, I borrowed a horse to get here. How long do you plan to be around here? I'm heading east tomorrow, Mr. Sherman. I'm hauling the Rafter H stock into Kansas City. I see. The empty cars were put on Miss Hornblow's side in a week ago. Yes, I know. Your engine's already on my siding. If you could wait a couple of days while I load my cars, you could haul my stock instead of the Rafter H. Oh, I couldn't do that, Mr. Sherman. My instructions... Burke, are... it would mean a lot to me to get my cattle into Kansas City ahead of the Rafter H. I could make it well worth your while to wait until my cars are loaded and then move my cattle instead of the <laughs> Rafter H. Well, I might lose my job for not following instructions. You could say you had trouble with the engine and had to make repairs. You could say you made a mistake. And even if you lost your job, Burke... I'd pay enough to make it worthwhile. Hmm. Something to think about. Uh, Mr. Sherman. Now, waiter, you might bring me a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. But Mr. Sherman, there's something you should know. I don't know whether you're talking confidential or not, but... Uh, but what? A few minutes ago, a redskin came in and wanted to buy some flour and stuff. I told him to sit down and wait. Well, he's sitting not far behind you. And I've noticed him listening to what you and Burke are talking about. Yeah? Let me get a look at him. Yeah, he lowered his head when he saw you turning. I think I know that Indian. You do? About a year ago, I tangled with a masked man known as the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? That Indian was his partner. If he's overheard us... Listen to me, Hank. Yeah? Burke and I are going out behind the restaurant. You send the Indian out there, Savvy. Uh, But, Mr. Sherman... Here, take this double eagle. Now, do you, Savvy? (laughs) Yeah, I Savvy. We'll have to deal with that redskin. (laughs) 
We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Boxer Ben fights hard and fair. So in the ring, you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows. He's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves. No other cereal looks like Cheerios. It's shaped like little letter O's. No other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue... Len Sherman hoped to foreclose a mortgage on Clarabel Hornblow's Rafter H. Ranch. To do this, he bribed the railroad engineer to move his cattle to Kansas City ahead of Clarabel's. When he realized that Tonto had overheard the plans, he made arrangements to meet the Indian behind the restaurant where he had made his deal with the engineer. Burke, the engineer, was with him in the darkness. Are you sure you'll meet us back here? Yes. He was waiting to buy some flour from the restaurant owner. Hank, the waiter, will tell him friends are waiting for him. Hey, listen, I, I hear a horse coming this way. That's probably the Indian. He had a horse tied out front. Yeah, I see him. Passing along the side of the building and leading his horse. Hey, Indian. Oh, you call me? Yes. The waiter told you about us, didn't he? Oh, you feller who say meet him here? Yes. Raise your hands. Huh? Well, why... Why, you pull gun. Because you know who I am and what I planned. Take his gun, Burke. Yeah, I got it. The knife. I got that, too. Now, Redskin, get this straight. You're going along with the two of us, peaceful or otherwise. I'll let you mount your horse and ride quiet, or I'll slug you on the head and tie you, then take you along. What shall it be? Well, me go quiet. Ah, you show good sense. Unless you plan to make a sudden break, that would not be good. That would be suicide, because the two of us will be watching you every step of the way. Toto seemed to realize that he had no choice but to obey. He mounted quietly easy, and rode at a slow pace with Lem Sherman and the engineer following. Get him up, Scout. Get him. Come on. The Lone Ranger waited until long after dark with Thunder Martin and Clarabel Hornblow for Toto to arrive at the ranch house. It was nearly midnight when he decided to visit Silver in the corral before turning in for the night. Thunder accompanied him. Well, oh, what do you reckon is keeping Tonto so long? He's had time to go to town and back three, four times. Well, perhaps he didn't find the supplies we needed, Thunder. He may have ridden on to the next town. Yeah, maybe so. If he isn't here by daybreak, I'll ride into town. Lem Sherman's cow hands were working by moonlight and at top speed, loading the rancher's cattle into the cars which were lined up on the private spur of track. Working at night, the rancher planned to have his cattle loaded by noon the next day. The following morning, the lone ranger disguised his face so he could appear in the nearby town without answering a lot of questions. He inquired at a number of places, but no one could supply any information about Tonto. In fact, no one had seen the Indian. Finally, he reached the cafe. The place at the moment was empty, and the waiter stood in front of the open door. You work here? Yep. You looking for a good meal, mister? No, I'm looking for information. I'm here to inquire about an Indian friend. I think he came to town late yesterday to buy supplies. Well, that being the case, he go to the store across the street. And the storekeeper didn't see him. Well, say, come to think of it, an Indian came in here after the store had closed yesterday afternoon. Bought some bacon powder and flour and salt and a couple of other things. Did he pay with silver? Yes, sir. I don't know if he was your friend or not, but he was dressed in buckskins. He wore a band around his head. 
Do you know where he went after he left here? No, I can't say as I do. Now, let me think. Lem Sherman was here at the time. He was talking to the railroad man. It seemed that the Indian was eavesdropping on what they were saying. Did uh, Sherman know it? Well, I told Sherman he was being heard by the Indian. Then what? Well, I, I didn't mean to make trouble. <clears throat> Mr. Sherman's a mighty good customer, and I just did what Mr. Sherman asked me to do. He asked me to tell the Indian that friends were waiting for him behind the restaurant. Did Tonto go there? Uh, Tonto? The Indian. Well, he went out front, and he put the stuff he bought into his saddlebags, and he led his horse around the rear. And that's all I know. So help me, I don't know another thing. Come on, Silver. Uh, where are you going? Behind your cafe. Late afternoon found the tired men at the Sherman Ranch with their mission almost accomplished. By working all night and most of the day, they had brought together enough cattle to fill the train. Many cars were loaded and closed. Here's a few more cars, Burke. I reckon you might as well go to that engine and start getting fired up. I'll get to it right away. It'll take a little while to get up the steam. Hey, Mr. Sherman, we're nearly loaded. Good. Hey, what's that white stuff you're tracking around? Oh, that. <laughs> it's flour. The Indian had a busted bag full in his saddlebag. It's all over the floor of the boxcar where we left him and his horse. Ah. Hey, you can see a lot of it spill near the open door. Were you inside that car? Well, yeah, just check in to make sure the Indian is still hogtied. He is. His horse? That's tied, too. Uh, should I have the car loaded with feed for the cattle? Yes, and pile the feed on top of the Indian. But... Suffocate? Yeah. He'll suffocate. When the car's open in Kansas City, there'll be evidence of murder if his hands and feet are tied. Knock him out, then remove the gag and ropes. It'll be thought he sneaked into an empty car and fell asleep. I savvy. Leave it to me, Mr. Sherman. I'll handle things. Hey, boys. We're going to load the feet aboard the boxcar. Get it ready. Sherman watched coldly while his men prepared to fill the boxcar where Tonto had been held prisoner. He saw the foreman borrow a knife and start up the ramp which ran from the side door of the car. But he didn't see the masked man approaching from the direction of the town. The Lone Ranger had found where Tonto had spilled flour behind the cafe. With this as a clue, he had spent the day searching for one patch of white after another as Tonto had seized rare opportunities to blaze the trail. Now the end of the long search was marked by white footprints on the ramp leading to one cattle car. Sherman turned and saw the charging masked man. Two men went for guns, but the Lone Ranger was ready. He fired twice. Two men dropped their guns and hugged their wounded arms. The others, taken by surprise, stared wide-eyed as the white horse and masked rider dashed up the ramp into the cattle car. Oh, sir. Oh, easy, steady. The Lone Ranger leaped from the saddle and slid closed the heavy door. He drew his knife and slashed the rope that held Tonto's wrists. Take the knife and free your feet, Tonto. I'll untie that gag. Bullets splintered through the boxcar walls, but the men outside were shooting blind. There you are, Tonto. Only a lucky shot will hit us. But how we get out? Plenty men outside. All the men seem to be on one side of the trail. I'll open the door on the opposite side. If the coast is clear, we go out that way. All clear. Me cut scout free. No ramp on this side. I have to jump the horses to the ground. Ready, steady, big fellow. Ready. Get off, scout. Both horses leaped from the car, hit the ground, and raced away from the long string of cars on Sherman's siding. Clarabelle, Thunder, and the Raptor H. Cowhand saw the two horsemen approach at top speed. Who's them? Hold easy, Are these cars ready to move? I sure they are. They've been ready and waiting for a long time. They was some trouble with the engine. Now listen to me. I'll talk fast because every second counts. The engine is on Sherman's track. Yep, we know that. It shoved the string empties there. There was no trouble with the engine. Sherman bribed the engineer to move his cattle instead of yours. Why that ornery... He'll get to Kansas City and sell his stock to my customer. I'll be stuck. I'll be broke and I'll lose the range. Not if we can move your cars from the siding to the main line before the engine arrives. But how? Thunder's mules. I, that's a ticket. The mules will move them cars. We can move the cars one at a time and line them up on the main track. Did you hear that? You boys bring all the rope you can lay your hands on. Right. I'll go get my mules from pasture. <laughs> Right. 
ten mules were hitched to the first of the cattle cars. Once started, the car rolled easily along the spur, while ten more mules were hitched to the next in line. Thunder bellowed as never before and backed his threats with a cracking whip. All right, get along, you double-twisted tadpoles. Dig in your hoofs. Heave to it or I'll take off your skin and stretch it to make a carpet from here to the Rio Grande. West of the Rafter H, the Sherman cattle cars moved along the track. Sherman rode in the engine cab with Barnes. How far are you aiming to ride with me? Just until we're past the side and where the Rafter H spur joins the main track. <laughs> if Clarabelle's around, I'd like to wave to her as we go past. Hey, what the... You're slowing down. What's wrong, Bert? Look ahead. The track is blocked. Block. Hey, those are cattle cars. That's right. And they're just past the Rafter H site. They're the Rafter H cars. They're right on the main line track. There's no way to get past them. How'd they get there? Don't ask me. I don't want to stop here. Well, you can't go on without ramming those cars. Hey, look, there's that Indian. Well, and the masked man. And Clarabelle. Well, Sherman, how are you? Let me up that ugly-looking polecat. It's thunder. Back up, Bert. Get us out of here. Oh, no, you don't. You try backing that train and I'll unravel a string of cartridges at you. Now get down from that there engine, Sherman. No, no, don't you touch me. Stay away from me. Thunder won't hurt you, Sherman. Burke, do something. There's only one thing Burke can do. You'll have to go ahead. Isn't that right, Burke? Well, I... I... You got orders to move my cattle. Well, there it is. Now start moving. You'll have to push the cars until you reach Wellsville. There you'll be able to place your engine at the head of the train. Yeah, I know. My cars are hits to the engine. You'll have to pull them while you push the Raptor H. Not with this engine. I can't move a double load over the mountain, Sherman. I'll just have to unhitch your cars and leave them. And the next westbound can shove them back to your side. And... Burke, Tonto has uncoupled the Sherman cars. You're all set to go. All right, come on, Sherman. I'll escort you to the law. No, no, not the law. You abducted a man. You tried to bribe the engineer. And you're guilty of attempted murder. What about Burke? He was willing to listen to me. I was a fool to listen to you, Sherman. I've learned a lesson. And besides, we can't lock him up. He's got to take Clarabelle's stock to Kansas City. And so, Burke, you better get going. Yeah, sure. Just one question. How did you move these cattle cars from the siding to the main line? But why, that was easy. I did it with my mule. Thunder! Huh? Oh. Well, I was told to do it by the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>